Peruvians, 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 Peruvians are descendants of an old Indian tribe called, called Incas. Peruvians trying to do me in. Niggas say Peruvian, go and check his record. I come from Poncho's purple corn in astrology. Ain't got descended. The black Christ levitating in air nights. Dressed in all white, without the blend la bella. Red, white, and red. Black, Latin, Asiatic. So I can, I give it to you different. With the shits, come up on la mierda. Play cowboy, nigga, bet you gon' lose. Up the hill with a hundred inga. Speak English, I hit him with the Latin. Peloteros, holding Palo Guerrero. Te dejo la huancaina encima de tu cara. Uncle Nick, we've got an exclusive interview with my dogs right here. This is my man Big Grudge. He's working with Patterson, Power Big City. Please. we got my man Mantega Bye! You know what I'm saying? The Big Ceviche. <laughs> he's doing his one too. Um, He's actually repping Strong Island as well. That's you know correct. what I'm saying? And my man's repping Power City. And we're basically getting together to basically highlight this new project you guys put together. Yes. Well, uh, yes. I mean, is there anything else you'd like to elaborate on before we get into well, anything? It was a long time coming. That's not only is he, you know, a fellow musician, but he's family, my cousin. So, oh, shit. You know, we had actually spoke about getting together on a project years back, but due to, you know, life circumstances, we over here, he's over there. So finally, we got time to actually sit down and do the project, and this is what we put forth the uh, Materia Prima. Word up, you know what I'm saying? Available on all streaming platforms. Which means raw material for, you know what I'm saying? For those that don't understand what Materia Prima might mean, the translation into English is raw material. You know, I, I kind of want to get into how you brothers actually, uh, well, now we know that you're family. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that kind of out the window. But being family, doing hip hop, and kind of gravitating towards where you're at now, what were your first initial thoughts about creating the project, coming together, and even doing anything? Did you like his style of rhyming? Did you like his style of rhyming? Were there any things that kind of were maybe difficult to kind of wrap your head around in a certain sense of coming together creatively to create something that is unison, mm -hmm. has that synergy, you know what I mean? Right, right. Well, nah, uh, at the end of the day, Grudge is one of the most underrated producers, you know what I'm saying, to be honest with you. Like, this brother right here should be up there with Lost Professor, should be up there with Vinny Idol, should be up there with even Primo. So like the you produced the whole project? Yes, yes, sir. Those are all your beats? That's correct. Never. I told him. What I told you in the text, I said, whoever did the production on this project, this shit is up. Yeah. Like, like, because... It's a different, because I've, I've, I've listened to you on your yes. other projects, and I said, whoa, this sound right here, it kind of brought it back to the essence of the 90s, but also some 2000s shit. Right, right, right. But then it was also something that, even if you're not into hip-hop, the beats were melodic enough for you to yeah. kind of flow and tap in with the young audience now. Because right, right, right. they're more into a, a mood, a right. feeling, right. unless it's drill. A vibe. Yeah, yeah. outside yeah. of that type of thing. So I think you captured that very well. Thank you very much. That's okay. what I attempt to do, you know what I'm saying? Real hip hop music. Indeed. Real hip hop music. Prima, available on all streaming platforms. Get that. Exactly. What was y'all upbringing like? Well, my upbringing, you know, as you know, I'm Peruvian, uh, straight from, you know what I'm saying, the power city. Um, and basically, upbringing is hard work and just striving to overcome, you know what I'm saying? That's basically it. Uh, one family, um, <clears throat> Pardon me. One parent household, me and my siblings, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Mother, my siblings. Mother, father, sunshine. who? Nah, just my old earth. You know what I'm so saying? what happened to Pop Deuce? Pop Deuce. He just couldn't handle it, you know what I'm saying? He just split. You feel me? Shout out to my father, because he did that to me, too. I tell people in life, my father's the first con artist I ever met. This nigga <laughs> tried to get me a pair of tonics one day Shit. with the straps. Just nigga just was dope, like... Though. Now nah, they might be dope, but back then, it was just whack, nigga. <laughs> and he was like, nah, son, see, you don't even need shoelaces. You strap it, you see the traction, you won't be like Jesse Owens. Yeah, right, and right. I was like, did he, did he nah. Say, did he say you was going to be like Jesse Owens? Yeah, he was like, yo, you're going to be flash, nigga. And I was like, nah, son, oh, uh, I ain't feeling this, but you're my father, so I'm going to trust you. We got back home, Mom Dukes was like, what the fuck are these? Right, right, right. 
Yeah. Take his ass back. So I came back with some Ewings and I was chilling. You know what I'm saying? But Pop Dukes was the first nigga to try to gas me up. Short changing nigga. And I'm like, damn, huh? So, but then after a while, he dipped because it was just too much for him to deal with. And I guess it's easier for sometimes a man to just, like, Papa was a rolling stone. Wherever you lay your hat is your home. Like, it's easy to take your dick and just go somewhere else. But anyhow, the ladies really got to hold it down because they have that maternal instinct. Right, you know what I'm saying? And I just held you for nine months. I'm not putting you nowhere else but in my arms and I'm going to love you. Right, so, right, right. Yeah. So well, to my old earth. Yeah, so, so right. and your upbringing? Well, my upbringing was born in Patterson, New Jersey. Was in Passaic for a little bit, you know what I'm saying? And after that, we had some family Passaic? situations. Yes, sir. And then we wound up uh, moving out to Strong Island. Uh, I moved around a lot. So my, my childhood and my upbringing was very turbulent. Mm -hmm. I lost my mother at a young age, at 10 wow. years old. Sorry so to hear that. Pop Dukes, thank you, Pop Dukes. Had a man, 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 man up, you know what I'm saying? Raised five and kids even on though his own. he just lost his love of his life, right? Still keep his focus and take right. care of the babies right. and do it for her, right? Right. She's so, watching. You know that that was pretty. That's super honorable. Pretty rough, rough childhood. But because a lot of motherfuckers could just be like, "Yo, Grandma, Doña, Abuela, handle this. I got shit to figure was, out." It was none of that. It was you know he, he stuck around. He did what he had. And to that's do. your uncle. Yeah. That's yes. Age. Married to. My mom and his mom were cousins. Because yeah. his father is my grand Earth's brother. Oh, oh, pardon me, not, not father, mom. grandfather, right. grandfather. Right. Yeah, right. grandfather is um, my grand Earth's brother. Now, now, what's the most trouble your brothers ever got into in your life? Truthfully, I never got in any big trouble. I always managed to keep myself out of scandal and situations. So, um, what, maybe, so, you know so, what so, so what was your uh, recipe to delivering that type of lifestyle? Well, what was I, that, that that quality of life, I should uh, say? I mean, I always had something to do. You know what I'm saying? I was okay. always drawing. Is that Pop Duke's influence um, or just I, your... your I, would, I would say just... I would say, yeah, I got to give credit where credit is due. So uh, it, it would have something to do with him and just decisions that I made. You know what I'm saying? I'm the oldest of the five, so I always had oh. that, that cap to kind of like stay away from certain situations. So I never stuck around long enough to get myself into troubles where I had to be taken away or, gotcha. you know, being caught up in a legal system and situations yeah. like that. So, and I was always busy. I was always either something with the art, something with the music, so. So you are like, like, like you body the five elements. You embody the five elements. You do, um, you a break dancing nigga, do a head spin I, I, right now. You do a motherfucking <laughs> graph piece right, for right, us. Right, right. You understand? You got the fashion, see with the polo popping. Right, right, right. You got the lyrics, you got the beats, you probably DJ, do right, it all. Right, right. I mean, the DJ ass. This nigga's hip hop right here, son. Uh, okay, I'll take that. <laughs> but I uh, never really got into the, to the, the DJing, but if I had to, I'm pretty sure I got enough rudiment, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. To pick it up, but yeah, the. I, I so you got four out of the five, but <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. I'll take that. Triple nigga. threat. Triple yeah, threat. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Triple threat. Quadruple trifecta. Word up, word up. And well, you, my brother. That's, um, that's for myself. I seen you in Greece with the hammers, with, yeah, with the joint. Because yeah, how the fuck this nigga got out there? Word. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? Uh, my situation is a two part answer. Okay. All right. So, the first time that I really got into some deep situation was when um, it was like, my junior year in high school. All right, so at that point in time, you know what I'm saying, I'm, I'm striving to figure things out for myself, trying to acquire certain things for myself. So the only way that I saw fit was to get into the game. Okay. So boom. At that time, though, you know what I'm saying, you had to have somebody to supply you. You know what I mean? Because now, if you got the money, you just get whatever you can get. But at that yeah, time, yeah. you had to be under somebody. Yeah, so yeah. I was under somebody at that time. So, so they was giving you cook up or they was giving you raw? Nah, at this time it, well, was, just, it was just it was just weed. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, shit! Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we started, hey, yeah, we, my nigga. We started with the with the hard. You know what I'm saying? But and then after a while that just faded out. So we started with the no, weed. no, 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 no. Because the weed start like my Dominican niggas of town. Like niggas had spots that was doing crazy numbers, yeah. and it was like nigga, we ain't got to deal with that. Word. So boom. Plus the saying? crackheads and all that bring that heat. Yeah. So boom, we I'm dealing with that. So, um, what type of weed y'all have? Mango piña, chocolate thai? Uh, chocolate thai, chocolate thai. My so, nigga! <laughs> can I get a bounce for the ounce? <laughs> so boom, How much of the ounce is going for? At that point in time, I think it was like six. Okay. Yeah. So boom, you know what I mean? So, um, I'm you was the, getting that real Jamaican shit or you was getting some yeah. Peruvian chocolate mix-up? No, no, mix no, up? no, no. 
That's the real, the real yeah, deal. Machu Picchu. The real Machu Picchu. Niggas had the Machu Picchu in chocolate time. <laughs> Deal. So, um, nah, I fuck with that shit heavy, son. We ain't have, I ain't had no place to stash it. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, so I'm Mom Dukes was having that, nah, and you nah, would so, never do that. So, but I had. You know where you used to stash my crack on the side of the house in a lunchbox? That's, you know the the, 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 the thermos? Idea. Yeah, yeah. It was bushes and shit. <laughs> they just stash it there, wow. and the thermos to keep the temperature right. Hey, that's that's what was, exactly. It was created with. Yeah, she was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so basically, you know Mom Dukes it was created with that belt in the buckle. Bust your ass. That's how you evade situations. Plus, try to be respectful. Right. So basically, you know what I'm saying, I had to put it under the bed. You know, the bed has the frame, so mm -hmm. I ripped the bottom part open and I put it inside. Oh, gotcha. So gotcha, all gotcha. of a sudden, out of nowhere, my old earth decides, they're like, you know what, you need a ceiling fan. So I'm not thinking nothing about it. I go to school, and when I come back, I couldn't find it, because my man hit me, he was like, yo, I'm outside, I need something for me and my brother. Mm -hmm. So I'm going inside the crib, and I'm looking for it, looking for it, can't find it nowhere, I'm going crazy. So then all of a sudden, like, um, my earth hit me. She usually would call on her break to see how we was doing. She was like, um, you know, we need to talk. That right <laughs> right then and there, you already knew. I already knew, I already knew, I already knew what time it was. Home. I already knew what time it was. So the next day, she was like, um, you know how embarrassing this was? And to, to hurt your old earth, because, you know, all you want to do is just make her proud. That right there just made me feel, like, lower than low. She was like, you know how embarrassing this was? The man... Pulled up the bed, and as soon as he pulled up the bed, the first thing bah, he bah, saw, bah, 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 bah. yeah, exactly. Mad packs. So, boom, at that point in time, my earth. And if he don't know what's going her. on, that brown shit might look like heroin to him. So he ain't even thinking weird. He like, <laughs> why your spills? No, no, but you smell it though. So. Yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, depending on how he got it packaged, I don't Word. know. So um at the point at that point. Oh, but you're time, right. This is back in the day. Niggas yeah. ain't got that fancy ziploc well, air sight. You can smell it in the room. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So so so, so, so with earth. that being said, mom dukes didn't have an idea of what was going on? Nah, she didn't have no idea because she so, worked so, she worked nights. Oh. So that's the thing. You know so saying? during like, the day, y'all nice. going to school. Yeah, exactly. She's kind of resting, right. breezing. Yeah. She might get up, poke in your room, do this, yeah. that. You no, know, by I... that time, we already in school. You know what I'm saying? So she's just getting herself ready for work and preparing a meal. So when we come and home, thinking we got something that to eat you niggas are doing the right, on the thing. right path. You know what I'm saying? So with got that you. being said, she really had nobody to lean on. She couldn't contact my pops. So she called my aunt. So at that point in time, she was building with my aunt. They was like, yo, um, they trying to get me into all programs, but since I don't have mm -hmm. no priors, I can't get into no program. Yeah, yeah, of course. So she was like, I bet the best thing we can do is either he stay here, get locked up, or die. So it was like, what we gonna do is we gonna take him to South Carolina. So I remember like it was yesterday, my old earth was like, as soon as I, bags packed everything, as soon as I'm about to leave the door, she stopped me. She was like, if you promise me you can stop, you can stay. I looked her dead in her eyes and I was like, to be honest with you, I don't think I could, I could promise you that. Mm. Gotta go. So, moving forward, I'm in South Carolina. I'm doing good. So now school about to end. So I'm like, yo, what you gonna do with your life? Cause you can't stay here. So I gotta do something with my life. So I entered into the military. Mm. So I entered into the military. Army, Navy, Marine, Marines. Yeah, I'm doing good. I meet this individual. Where you know what I'm saying, I lost everything. I lost everything, so now I'm looking how to get back. So when I'm looking how to get back, the only way I know is to get into the game. So now as I'm getting in the game, I'm about to start moving certain things. I start moving ecstasy. Ooh. Yeah, so we about to go away to this uh, exercise in California, it's, uh, 29 Palms, where uh, it's called Combined Exercise, CACS. So is that in San Combined Diego? Combined Exercise, yeah, it's in San Diego. Word. Because I was gonna join the Navy, I wanted to be. Cause I was, I went through something <clears throat> similar to you, and um, I wanted to be a Navy SEAL. Mm. So I joined the Navy, and I was going through all these things, but I kept failing my weed test. But I went through everything, and then my next thing was to go to San Diego. And I know they have a lot of facilities for training for military in San Diego. Right. So with that being said, I'm out there moving, and I get caught. So I did all that. All that you know saying, to elude prison time to do prison time. Oh shit! So now, <coughs> so that's why you get a caught with the ecstasy yeah. in the military. military. Yeah, and I do time, man. At that point, in so time, no, 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 no. Let's not skip past that. No, no, we're not skipping. No, past no, no. That. So, so let, let, let's break it down for the people. So now, because I just interjected. So now you have ecstasy. Yeah. You coming from South Carolina? You join 
the military. The, the military. You get a pack from somebody thinking you could do numbers, and you go out to San Diego. I go out to San Diego, and my man and told how do you me get before caught? I leave, he's like, "Yo, don't take that out there." But I'm thinking with greed. I'm like, "Yo, it's gonna be a drought. I could charge whatever, and I'm gonna get it off." So, so how much did you have? How many grams? Uh, no, nah, no, nah, I only had a couple. Only had a couple pills with me. I ain't had no no crazy numbers. I had a couple pills with me just to make enough. So when I maybe got how back, much? 20, 25? No, nah, I had thirty. 30 pills. <clears throat> and I'm and, thinking and about selling them at thirty dollars. So you already so know. Let's do the mathematics. All right, ten times thirty is three hundred. So you could maybe make a G. So I so at that point in time, uh we at uh I keep saying that at that point in time. So we go to Fuck child. that! We that go, point go, in time. Let's go, go, nigga. We go to child and I tell my man who was Okay, known, no, 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 let, let's not breathe. So now you got the ecstasy. Yeah, I'm about to let you know now, how, now, how, how do you get caught? That's what I'm about to oh, let you sorry. know. Yeah, we go to child. And I let oh, child. Man, I think yeah, it's a trial. No, 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 child. We go to child, and I let my man know who was known for stealing rims on base. I'm like, yo, let your people know, you know, okay. I got them things. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, yeah. And no later than 10 minutes, I go back to the hooch. And I got the whole chain of command in front of me. Like, um, can we speak to you? I'm like, yeah, what's going on? It's like, uh, we heard that you are selling narcotics. Yeah, exactly. I was like, no, nah, I don't got nothing. And I can remember this as clear as day. He asked me three times because at that point in time, if they ask you, do you need a lawyer, you say, yeah, they can't search you. You so said no. me being proud right. and ignorant. Like, no, nah, I ain't got nothing to hide. I ain't got nothing to hide. Boom, they searching the hooch, going crazy, going crazy. They That's find it. I was dealing with a knee surgery, lateral torn meniscus, so I had it in there with my, with my medicine. So he going through the bags, going through everything, and then... He opened up my coat because this coat, the Gore-Tex had a, 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 a department in the inside. So when he opened it up, he found my medicine. He was like, what's this? I was like, nah, it's my medicine for my knee. He opened it up, and when he shook it, it was in there with the Batman bags. He was like, it's not medicine. That was all she wrote. So after, now, 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 now what happens? You get kicked out. Mm -hmm. Your parent, well, not your parents, but your mother is extremely upset. Everybody's yeah. like, yo, this fucking guy is... He's done. He's gonna well, fuck your, his whole your, life up. Your old earth will never tell you you're done. No, 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 no. In so their mind, in their mind, everyone's yeah. thinking they like always strive to give you uh, by some his, encouragement. No, 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 because pushing. you told her from the right. beginning, I'm leaving because I, I can't give you that promise. Right. And then look what you're doing and, in the fucking yeah. exactly. So now they're like, yo, the boy is is what he is. So now at that point from the drug dealing, how do you differentiate between becoming straight? I don't wanna go back. That time and just told me I don't want to do that. So again. so so what was the discipline? Did they lock you up? Yeah, I did. I did two years in the military. Two jail. years. Yeah. And what was that like? It's it's nothing like Rikers Island or nothing like that. But you're being controlled all the time. You're being told what to do, when to eat, when to sleep. Did you get to speak to your mother, your parents? Yeah, yeah. You got visits and stuff like that. What? They they came to visit yeah, you. Yeah, indeed. And were 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 you in a guerrilla mind state or were you in a mind state of like like rehabilitation. The first the first six months is the the hardest because that's when you're adapting to the situation. After that, it was just growth and development. After that, that's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. That's why I call you Montega X. So they be having the lingo. Nigga took his time to learn the English language well. All right. Um. Now, who's the first chick to ever break your hearts, man, and why? Oh man. Pre high school, you know, you would have to go. I would have to go back to like to the archives when I was like, you know, maybe 11, 12, where you fall hard for them young girls that don't pay you any mind. So I wouldn't even remember her name. It, it would be so long back. Um, maybe he has a, a recent story. I couldn't really, you know what I'm saying? As a grown man, like as in teenager it, it never took place like i never had that so so, so you really here. had a a, a a solid situation where your emotions never really uh, got involved you know I mean, that, in a that, particular development where you felt like wow i got the short end i mean I, I always i was always like I, I could never really like as a as a grown grown teenager or a grown man i never Got caught up in those situations, but as a young, do you kid, have mad bitches? They were, were you dating like one chick? <laughs> I have mad bitches, son. Part of my language, so, like, I'm, you know, 
I mean, I did well with the ladies. I'm not going to say I had mad or I was... Oh, know, no, no, no. I, no, I, I keep it real. Well, yeah. Oh, so you smash and pass. Hold <laughs> <laughs> it down. Stacks, who broke your heart? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, I would have to say uh, my queen. You know what I mean? Okay. 143. Love you, queen. Uh, okay. This was after... It was after we had our son. We were striving to have another child. But at that... When we found out that we was having another child, she was like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to keep it, I'm going to keep it. And then later on, it came out that she didn't want to keep it. So I was hurt. I was in tears because me striving to be better than my father, I was looking at, all right, whatever I couldn't do with my son, I'm going to do with this child, and we're going to make this work unison, yeah, 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 cohesively. Yeah, yeah. This was your bounce back. Yeah, so when she told me, you know, she didn't want to have it, I was, like, hurt done for but looking in hindsight she's a woman i don't really know what she's going through so i was very selfish in that decision so yeah she was the one well no 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 there, there, there was a broad mona i got her pregnant mm -hmm. <laughs> and she was a fucking millionaire her name was mona or uh, monica okay, okay. Uh, and um she was like yo sean you know what i mean <laughs> how old were you when this took place i was i believe 24, 25. Okay, okay, and right, she right. was like uh, 42 or something. Yeah, she okay. was getting like, yeah, man. Nah, 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 her ass was, was fat. She had it together. She was doing a thing. She, she looked she young and nice. Yeah. Now she looked old. Yeah. <laughs> old baby. Yeah. Shout out to you, Mona. But anyhow, um, <laughs> you you know, like, she was like, yo, I can't do this with you. Mm. And then you ain't making the type of bread that I'm making. Like, you know what I'm saying? I want to buy my little baby this and that and go over here and do it. Like, it's like taking care of two people. And tr it's, tr it's like trying to raise two babies at one time. And I felt super disrespected. Oh, shit. And at that moment, she was like, you don't have no college credentials. You don't have this. You don't have that. You ain't getting, like, what you going to do with your life? To sell drugs and be hanging out with me? Fuck out of here, nigga. So I realized the honeymoon was over. Mm -hmm. And I never wanted anyone to ever speak to me again like that. Where the, re the truth of things hurt. So I said, nah, I'm going to go back to college. Uh, and then I met another lady, and we were chilling and doing our thing, and I trans did a transition where, you know, I kind of started getting my things together, and I said, I'm going to focus my next two years on school, okay. trying to get my shit together and do great things, Go you know what I'm saying? Brother. But it was a similar situation where I said, damn, son, that's how you feel about me? I was angry, but mm -hmm. then I said, nah, you know what? Hold on. I, I got to correct something in my life, because if you're feeling like that, it's not because you're going to love me. It's because you're keeping it real with me. Right. right. You yeah, understand? You're right. keeping it that's what, I'm saying. that's what I'm saying. That yeah. In hindsight, I was a little selfish. That Me too. Because yeah. I, I wanted what I wanted. Yeah, exactly. Word. But now and looking at... At the end at, of the day, now, we got a beautiful daughter, Janess. Love you, baby. Salute. Now, um, y'all yeah, rapping Peru, all body karate. And um, I seen... Well, I heard in one of your songs, Mr. Wallace... You know what I'm saying? Peruvians trying to do me in, like. Go on, bring it back. This was said by Mr. Wallace. Peruvians trying to do me in. Respect us, beloved. We need you to pay homage. Others such as myself are trying to carry on tradition. Why was that so important for you to address? Even though he said that lyric so fucking long ago. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, I believe that um, Peruvians are not looked upon as lyricists or anybody they can contribute to the hip hop community. We're just seen as people who have the best coke or the best cuisine. So that's the reason why I incorporated that in my lyrics. To be honest with you, when I heard that, I just was ecstatic, because it's finally, you know what I'm saying, somebody talking about us, whether it be negative or positive, it, finally somebody shedding the light on us. And that's all I thought about at that point in time. I didn't think any further than that. I'm just like, oh, yo, you heard Biggie say Peruvians. That was it. You know, I'm saying we rest in, in power, continue to rest in power, but in, uh, in reference toward the industry, the industry need to know that Peruvians are here and we're going to keep the door open. Point blank, mm -hmm. period, exclamation mark. Got you. So don't look at us as drug dealers. Don't look at us as this. Don't look at us as that. Because we're about to get into another question because you guys have a very rich history. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's all around the board. So let's not pigeonhole us. Yes, I was just about basically. to say that, yes. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't, don't put us in a box and just leave us there. Word. And be like, oh, that's a nice pair of sneakers. <laughs> I ain't wearing them, though. All right. So let's get to it. Hopefully that makes sense to the people. You know, this is kind of interesting because we're going to go from Biggie to Tupac. Mm -hmm. So now, and you know, they had the infamous thing. Actually, and you Tupac, know, 
Tupac is named after a Peruvian. That's what I was just about to get a lot into. Of people so don't know that. A lot of y'all rapping Peru, doing y'all thing. How does it make y'all feel to know that a hip uh, a hip hop icon, you know what I'm saying, like Tupac, was actually named after a revered, legendary leader from the essence, the Incas, this and that. You know what I'm saying, and, and he kind of took on that role. If you actually see the way but, Tupac but, but then, passed, he passed. But but but, but the original well. Tupac, uh, 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 Amado, Amado, was assassinated. Right, and so and that's basically what happened to Son. Exactly. So, like like like, what, what what do you think about that connection there? Because a lot of people would I never thought when I heard Tupac, I thought mm. it was some African shit or something. I, you know what I'm saying? I mean. I think Tupac's real name was something different than Tupac Amaru. I believe he was born Lesane Crooks is his government real name. name. That is Lesane? correct. Tupac Shakur, you mean? Yes. Yeah, 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 his, his, that's not it. His government name is different yeah, yeah. than Tupac Amaru. Oh, so they changed his name. Uh, gotcha. I believe. Or he so, changed his name. See, that's that's the question, right? We I don't know, or we here probably do not know how he came became. Up. You motherfuckers in the you comment sections. Let us know. You know what I'm saying? Because that's something that was never introduced to the public. How he was born um, with a particular name, and then he became uh, this name, the Tupac Amaru, when he became famous. Shakur. Shakur. Yeah. Tupac Amaru Shakur. Yeah. He's actually Tupac Amaru Shakur. Oh, I wasn't aware. Yeah, of that. his yeah, middle yeah. name is Amaru, oh, and yeah. that's the Inca. The Inca right, is Tupac right. Amaru. Right. Um, I don't really have a lot of information on. All of that, so... The question, but how does it make you feel, nigga? I mean, it makes me feel like I feel. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't... And what's that feeling you get? I feel good every day, my brother. You know what I'm saying? There so, you go. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know it's, it's a representation of the culture, but... But he wasn't going around saying, like, yo, right. I'm That's what I, yeah, that's you know what 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 I want y'all yeah, niggas to say. He wasn't, he wasn't repping it, like... Nothing like right. that. He just took the name. I don't know if he took the name or how he came across the name. But, but how you came this. across the name is you got to know who See, the fuck right. had the name before you. You got to have the information, Word. right? Indeed. If there's no information on that... I think it came from his old earth, to be honest with you. It could, I th it could I think, be, yeah. or it could have came from him. He could have yeah. read some literature. He was an avid reader. You know what I'm saying? And that could have led to the inspiration and be like, you know what, I'm going to take on this name. And he did it. Like but most, there was never an explanation as to how. You so do why. you think yeah. that like his... Like most artists do, because Biggie, uh, his name comes from that movie from... Uh, oh, Christopher name? Wallace, King of New York. No, no, no. No, 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 no not that's one. Wallace. Biggie Smalls comes from another movie. Yeah, no, exactly. Oh, I got you. Yeah, it it's comes from, from the 70s. Uh, yeah, um, a Bill Cosby joint. Right? And Let's I do think, it again, I think it's called. And I don't know the name of it. I think that he had some issues early on in his career where he had to change his name. Because there was another Biggie, I believe. Yeah, there was something going on where he had... To like switch his right. name up a little because of something that came before. Fifty Cent also right. got his name from them saying somebody iconic in the hood. So you know people take these. No, 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 but 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 you, we talking about a dynasty, yeah, he's, a he's, civilization. It's a heavier. There's a heavier yeah. situation. Yeah. You know this what I'm ain't saying? just a stick up. Kid. Right, right, right. It's a heavier and situation. the Spaniards came and assassinated his that brother in front of everybody to correct. make sure right. that nobody. Ever tries to fucking right. do he this again. He was leading a rebellion. Yeah. He was exactly. leading a rebellion against the conquistadors, and he had to be made an example of, which is what they did, and that's what goes down in history. So do you think, by default, maybe Tupac known or not knowing, do you think his political be beliefs as and beefs as long as, like, as far as long, uh, along the lines of power to the people and things like that, do you think that might be rooted actually in his name and a lot of people maybe didn't capture that mm -hmm. because they saw the thug life right, on his right, belly right, right, right. but nobody it wasn't Google like that back then right. <laughs> nobody ever Googled the shit right, to see right, right, who right, the right. fuck is the real Tupac I mean, right. see there's so much information missing in order for you to have an opinion or develop a strong opinion you have to have that information like so what, do you think he had that information I believe he read and he was introduced because not too many people... All right, let, let's go back to education in this country, right? When you go to school, do you learn about a Tupac Amaru? No. No. But do you learn about the Inca? In school here, you get maybe one or two pages on Inca history. But it's a broad... Um, it's, it's a broad topic, but they don't go into detail. Tupac Amaru is a detail... Of, of the Inca history. Like, you got to go inside and no, that's very specific. It, it, exactly. So now for a person... That's not broad stroking. Right. For a person to tap in and then extract this 
particular person and then title himself and then that. embody it and live it and then get he, assassinated right. and also have political beliefs right. along those he lines. He had information. You, you, you feel me? Yeah. And like the, the public, because the public became drawn to the individual. You know what I'm saying? He bought he he's he became an Logic icon. Life. Correct. So but the public wouldn't be like, wait a minute, where did this man get this name from? Because they just took the name and they were like, that's his name and that's all there is to it. You feel mm -hmm. me? But there's more information that went into him making that decision. More than face value. And then, and then even if you was to pick up books on 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 the Incas, you gotta be. It, it's it's an it was Son, an you gotta sit down for at least ten years to learn. This is an empire. You know what I'm saying? The shit because and, the shit spread across mad different continents. That is correct. And it, as we well, it spread across one continent into islands. And right, that shit was all the way into the person. Caribbean. That shit yeah. was into the Caribbean. Islands all over the place. So, yeah, yeah. But if you don't have South the America, information... I could say continents. North America, right. South America, that Latin America. That shit was a lot yeah. greater than what we were told in history books, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And this is what I tell people all the time, because you know I'm black and Italian, and um, it was a rude awakening for me to learn that black people own black people in America right. and have slaves. Right. That Native Americans own right. black people and right. white people and because you know always see hear black shorties. They be like, oh, I got that good hair, I got that I got, I got that Native American. And I never took it as nothing uh, until I got knowledge. And I was like, yo, how the fuck then I started thinking, how the fuck your hair so wavy, girl? Because <laughs> the Native American don't fuck with the slaves like that. Unless they own you. So there's, there's a lot of other stuff like you were saying about, so, so when I started learning about history, it opened my mind to say, damn, son, this is a broad spectrum of information that we haven't tapped into, kind of like the ocean. We don't know what the fuck is going on in the or ocean. Or the jungles. Exactly. <laughs> this is our history. So that that's interesting to see that your brothers kind of embrace it, but still don't understand it. Right. I wouldn't say time. I wouldn't say not to understand it, but... You, it's hard to make. Well, no, no, not to understand right. his path right. on why he chose to embody a political leader from a particular town, from a region that was totally foreign that niggas don't even know about, mm -hmm. and now we talking about it. Right. You know, what I'm, I'm pretty so, sure when this gets out there, there's it's gonna, gonna be people gonna have a lot of information, people, yeah. and they're gonna they're gonna you know, tap in. Yeah. Niggas gonna do the conspiracy videos. <laughs> they're gonna do the Illuminati shit. Everything. Like, when did y'all both become affected by hip hop? Well, to me, seeing individuals on TV with jewelry, the flashiest clothes, and then saying something, that just mesmerized me. So I would believe it was the first time I was introduced to Video Music Box. So mm. when I'm introduced to Video Music Box, I'm Rob like, again. yo, what is this? You're like, damn, nigga, this shit is fucking crazy, phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. So so that's when it affected you, Ralph right. McDaniels, exactly. video music box. Then it just escalated from there, MTV. What was the first video you saw on there? The first video I saw on there, that, like, was like, yeah, yeah. I believe it was, um, girls, I got them locked, pump it Ooh, up. I got gotcha. you, girls, scene. I got them locked, pump it up. I got gotcha. you. That was the first video I saw. Super yeah, love scene, word. Casanova, right? Yeah, word. word. And you? The first time... You're a little was, older than him, I can tell. Yes. The yeah. first time I was... But he got more grades than you. What the fuck is going I on? No nah, it's just a joke. I'm, I'm playing around. Nobody got grades. I would say the first time that I was captured by hip-hop, like, holy, because I had heard hip-hop um, when I was out here in Jersey, in Pasay. And it was um, kind of whack. No, no, no. It was the opposite. It was the opposite, actually. Now I'm with you. It was the opposite because we was uh we was being babysat me and my my little brothers by these older chicks that lived in the building and they actually had rappers delight on vinyl oh. so they came through while they was babysitting it was playing and they they kept playing that shit back to back to back to back to back so that had to be what eighty or whatever seventy nine so that was when I first caught it but when I was influenced by it it would have to be Slick Rick. And Dougie Fresh, the Lottie Dottie, and the for show. Sure. When that shit came out, that was it. That was the shit, right? And let, let me add on to that. I'm saying I gotta shout out my cousin Eddie because when I first went to his crib, it was the <laughs> first time I saw it was like a museum because he had pictures everywhere. He had the pinups. Word, he had the pictures everywhere. And when I saw that, I was like, yo, what, what is this? He was like, you, you never saw this? I was like, nah. He would show me albums, he would show me vinyl, cassettes, and 
That was another. Yo, big up to Eddie. Word, that was another. Word, yeah. That was another. Part. Eddie Machete. I don't know if you carry a machete, but I got a homeboy named that. That was that was another significant part on my journey to hip hop. Yeah, I gotta shout out my cousin Eddie, man. Salute Eddie, get better, word, man. Word, indeed. Now, um, I wanna ask y'all, who's y'all? I know Nas is your favorite MC. I don't know who's your favorite MC, but DMX is my dog, and. You know, R.I.P. to DMX. Right. But you, you know, like through the dogs, through the music, through it, like I, I connect with him very heavy, and he's my favorite MC. But he's my favorite MC for how he carries himself, his emotional display, and what he represents. Mm -hmm. But he isn't my favorite MC necessarily for all his lyrics. Okay. Because you know, after the first two albums, DMX kind of got whack. I'm gonna keep it real with you. I don't know if it was the that's drugs or that that's grand champ. Yeah, there's a lot of people's opinion. Oh. Niggas started, yeah, Def Jam, but a lot of people started being like, yo, son, you ain't, you ain't, you know what I mean? Bringing what you was bringing at one point, but that's my nigga for life, you know what I'm saying? So I, I don't give a fuck. That's my, if a nigga say, yo, you got one album, listen to it forever. But aren't we supposed to evolve, though? Like, you can't keep bringing the same stuff. No, but you gotta bring fire, though. That's and that's saying. my problem with Nas, is that at certain points, he didn't bring the fire. And then the nigga was like, yo, I left comments in your baby seat. I was like, yo. That's Jay Z. Super yeah. ugly. Yeah, I said, yo, nigga, it's, it's, it's time to stop rapping. <laughs> but anyhow. When I first heard Illmatic, it just made sense. No, no. It painted something cinematic for me. Oh. Word for word, line for line. I he, felt like he, I was standing next to him in Queensbridge. And nobody he, has done that for me at that point in time till then. Got you. So that's the reason why. Like, like you, 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 you lived his lyrics through him vicariously. Vicariously, yes, sir. And that's what entertainment is about. Mm -hmm. Whether you're watching Shakespeare, whether you're watching Nas, whether you're fucking watching the Chinese motherfuckers do ballet, flip upside down, whatever the fuck it is, some Japanese niggas dressed like bitches doing some geisha <laughs> show. It's all about, you know what I'm saying? That you that to capture the and individual. visualize. What that motherfucker's going through in that moment. Word. That's deep. So Nas brought you to the to city. Queensbridge without that, even being from Queensbridge. But 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 did, 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 was there a point in your career where you were like, yo, I wish I was from New York or were you proud to be from Jersey? I'm always proud from the power, to be from the power city. But there's a certain vibe. When you go to the city, it's just something different. It's just something, I don't know, something about Trust me, I be in Ravenswood, Queens, I be in the projects, well, nigga. I already know how you get down. Yeah, you and, 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 and no, I could connect with the energy you talk yeah, about. It's, well, it's, it's different. Yeah, it's upbeat all the time. Upbeat. Mm -hmm. Even if it's a downbeat, it's yeah. upbeat. Man, I would say off the top, I would, I would probably say between KRS-One and Slick Rick. You Describe your favorite and least favorite part about being a musician. I believe my favorite part is creating. I love the aspect of putting something together cleverly. Um, what was the other part of the question for myself? The worst my part. My, and the, the worst, worst part. part would be having to present yourself to people. Mm -hmm. Because, that, you know, automatically people have this... Once they look at you, they already... They done with you. Once they look at you, they done yeah, with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Whatever First they little thought is, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. So that's that's the worst part right there. They won't even give you the time of day. Because <laughs> most people, uh, you know, don't come across as flashy. So that person that doesn't come across as flashy may not get the look that somebody that does look flashy does. So that's that's the worst part to me. Basically, it, it, it's really the bravado, the persona, and the materialistic approach that people have like oh this nigga ain't got the balenciaga this nigga yeah. ain't got this, this nigga ain't got that he ain't got the right face that looks in some way he's bigger than me this nigga crushed my hand whatever the fuck it is people take things into heart and they kind of you know while i was saying something I saw, I saw somebody post it he said people love to tell you how you can't do something then when they see you do it they want to tell you how you should maintain it <laughs> and then they want to after that, they want to tell you what you didn't do about, blah, blah, and it's just like, yo, son, why you just don't focus on yourself? Mm. You know what I'm saying? And if people are more <laughs> accepting, and those are true. most of the people that don't follow their dreams. Mm. But they want to tell you, right. you can't get it. Right. I'm not going to fuck with you and I'm going to shut you down because you ain't. That's a part of humanity, though. That's yeah. you, oh, everybody goes 
do right. that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, it's almost like you have to go through that. It's a part of the process. You know what I'm saying? But I, I, I think you're gonna, it's the negative and the gonna positive be. friction. You right. always yeah, yeah, yeah. Break the Duality. Break the Word. That's, so, that's how, that explains everything. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? The Latin aspect. The Latin aspect, the reference to the aspect. Because I told you, nigga, talk <laughs> that shit. Yeah. Spanglish. Get it popping. Indeed. And I don't even understand everything. But I love it. Because I watched you that day. Nigga had the red track shoot on. Nigga came up here <coughs> with the Peruvian <laughs> flag on his head. And nigga just rapping, 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 rapping. But then nigga was looking in the crowd like, yo, you know, I stomp you niggas out, right? <laughs> you better like my shit. And nigga just walked out like, I'm the king of this shit, bitch. I said, hey, who the fuck is this guy? But he do it all Spanish, basically. Right, 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 right. I said, this is your shit, nigga. Uh, hey. Because you made all these American niggas right. fuck with your shit. Right. We ain't even know what he was talking. Right. So if your fucking facial expression right. and how you, you did music it. music is feeling, so you yeah. can see. There you go. Oh, and the beat was shit popping in. and his shit, his cadence was. Right. And I understand Spanish. So right. I knew in between every two, three words what he was getting to. I, I owe the cadence to this man right here. That's another story. But um, in reference toward the Spanish aspect of the album, which would be writing on the wall and some little pieces that yeah. I may put on there. Things with I, have, I would have to give that to him, you know, in reference to that. Oh, you mixing, producing, and I piecing the album together. I yeah. produced it and we, we kind of like in the studio, we formulated how each song would, would be uh, handled, you know what I'm saying? But I produced the entire joint. Right. Um, in terms of the Latin aspect or feel of it, I that, fucks with I, it I think, heavy. I think it Shout out my Latin from being Latin, yeah, naturally, so it just, it just comes out. That well, it makes me feel like I'm an LDS. Mm. That, right. that that's, that's where I grew up. That's mad Puerto Rican, mad right. Dominican, right, 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 mad right, right, right. this one, that one. Right. So you can't get away from that. Right. You understand that's what I'm true. trying to say? Yes. And you embrace it because it's your culture, it's your community. Right. On that track, right. Plus, right on the wall. Latins are very rhythmic, you know what I'm saying? So, Nigga, Cuban motion! Yeah, that shit is all... Yo, you see the bitches doing that. Bang, 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 you know, that, that's going to come out naturally. I should say, you brought back a pure format in the sense of, like, the essence with the hip-hop, with the skits, with the boom back. you know what I'm saying? And you, that, the actual lyrical structure, the creativity and um, the duality between you two, how did you come up with something, in a sense, where you don't sound like everybody else? Well, because that was the thing that stood out to me about the project. Everybody's doing trap, everybody's doing drill, everybody's doing this, everybody's doing that. Everybody looks at something and tries to mimic it and recreate it. You niggas were like, nah, we're gonna start from scratch. Yeah, so basically in reference toward that. And you brought it back to the essence of hip hop though. Not, not create, and did it Latin style. Not creating a cookie cutter album uh, is basically due to the fact that we're Peruvian. So that's one strike against us, right? Mm -hmm. So now if we do something like everybody else, that's another strike against us. Ah. So if we come different, they're like, hold up, these Peruvians, they can rap. And they got something different. So if you look at Griselda, which is the same formula, they could have did drill, but they chose not to. So now these Buffalo niggas got something. So that's the reason why we chose to do that. Shout out to Griselda. Let's move forward. How do you both handle writer's block? Uh, writer's block, what I do is I put... Put the pen down for a little bit, let ideas come, because uh, creativity has to come to you. If, when you force it, it's going to sound forced. So whenever I'm dealing with any kind of block, I'll just put it down, you know what I'm saying, marinate for a little bit, and then when when that urge and the inspiration comes back, then I'll get right back to it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So that's my... And you? Uh, I like to listen to the beat. If, I, if I'm dealing with something and I cannot formulate something at that point in time so I just let the beat play for how long all day just let it play just Weeks? let it play no all day until I start to come up with something oh that's, that's so, so I, basically you drain yourself no nah, I, I, <laughs> I don't say I'll drain myself I just you try to become one head. with the with the beat oh I got so so it's basically like muscle memory repetition like you work out you see, you're working out now. Yes, yes, so I if you so. do a workout yeah. and you keep doing it over and over and over, eventually you start perfecting it. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, that you keep listening to the beat. Yeah. You kind of don't really have an inspiration, but you can draw something through the repetition of it. Right. 
Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, that is correct. Fuck these small niggas over here. Peruvians. God damn it. Peru. Um, how do you balance keeping it real without glorifying the criminal lifestyle uh, to impressionable minds? We were talking about this earlier. I believe there's a lot of kids that look up to you niggas. Yeah. That'd be oh yeah, the Peruvians, mm, they got that white flame. Mm-hmm. 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 You, you know what I'm Cause niggas be bragging about coke. You know, I had the tan coke, I had the, I had the gray coke, I had the right. pink coke. It's mad different kind of coke right. that was out. Right. And y'all niggas are known for having that real good flake. So, you know, how do you incorporate being yourself, representing your culture, but also keeping it authentic in a certain sense where you're not glorifying being a criminal to the shorties. Yeah, I believe that it's all in balance. Teaching them a lesson. Yeah, it's all in balance. It's all in balance and letting them know that, you know, if you do partake in certain things, there are repercussions. Yeah. Paint a picture of something that may have occurred in the timeline. That's basically it. Do you and think Nas not- does that? And do you think that's why you incorporate that or are you just an individual? I believe... I know you love Nas. I, I believe that striving to be cinematic is the best way when you're being an artist, especially in hip hop. So you. that's why I always strive to pin my verses in that fashion. Got you. Basically, how do you guys uh, keep your balance in between keeping it real, <laughs> explaining life to people, but not glorifying a criminal lifestyle to the impressionable minds out there? Well, <clears throat> we like, have- like for example, you were a person that was able to avoid all that right. in your life. Right. So. I would say being there, anything that's recorded and is put out into the public is going to have a reception. Every artist should have an accountability mindset that whatever you put out there, it'll come back in some way or form. Boom. So if I know there's children listening or females listening, I know not to uh, address certain situations that will bring some sort of a negative uh, repercussion. So connotation. Right. I would. I would. I would say that I don't want to project anything negative in any way or form, but also hip hop is creativity, is art. So you really can't tell a person like, yo, you shouldn't rhyme like this or you shouldn't rhyme like that. Just every person, every individual has to be accountable. And I think it'll be a better uh, result at the end, in my opinion. Absolutely. But at the end of the day, do you think the the industry really wants people being accountable? Or do you think no people crash them? No, because the negative or that type of a uh, negative publicity generates attention money. and money, so that conflicts, right? It's all about money, so of course they're gonna want that, but it's up to the artist to have a little bit more of an individual right uh, standpoint and be like, nah, I'm not gonna do that. So you are gonna have 50 artists that will pursue that lane. And then you're going to have the 50 artists that pursue the opposite. And there you have the balance. It can't all be on some negative bullshit, in my opinion. And I have to concur. I agree with you. Mm-hmm. Now, um, describe your worst performance and what you learned from it on uh, stage. Worst performance on stage. It would probably go back to a talent show um, that I did. I might have been like 15 or 16 years old. And I got on stage and I forgot my rhyme, so I had to like... Nigga, I did that too. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Shit, so, I was mad strong and proud with these lyrics that right. I was kicking earlier. Right. Nigga, that shit went out the window. I was nah, like, see, the thing is crazy when you look no. out into the crowd. See, if I didn't... If I That's didn't what look, happened to me. I, didn't look I looked into, into the, the crowd, crowd and I was like... Yeah. Because my mad niggas looking at me like... And the niggas like talking and you didn't even get to spit your rhymes yet. They're like, no, right. you know what's like, crazy is that I looked out into the crowd. I didn't see nobody in front of me. I saw the, the, the back, back like, the, like the motherfuckers that wouldn't be in camera angles. I'm like, and that's how, and then I'm like, I'm like, oh shit, so you got a freestyle and then catch The freestyle the, don't, don't turn no, out that well. No, because it's under duress. Keep it real, it's under because duress. I did the same thing. I spent like two bars right. that I knew, and then I started yeah. freestyling, and by like the eighth bar, yeah. that shit was out of here. It was and a then shit show. Yeah, and then it's like, ah! Is that people don't know, but you think they know. Meanwhile, they don't know. That could be a part of your shit. But you're like, damn, they know. So, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. You kind of shoot yourself in the foot. Yes, yes. yes. And you? Uh, I believe that it was, I want to say, what was the um, the spot that we met up, we linked up at? I don't remember the name I think of it was the like actual. One, two, three. Or some shit like I don't that. remember the name of that actual location. It was in Jersey City. Yeah, indeed. So, I'm doing my set. As I'm doing my set, 
the person in charge of the song starts playing another song. So in that's the when midst, the sound man got to get it, stomped out. In the midst of that, Son! in the midst of that, as he's doing that, that that broke my whole energy. But I had to, like, I had to bounce keep back. Going, though, yeah. yeah, I had to bounce back. I was like, "Yo, stop, chill. That's the wrong track. Play the next joint." So that that was the worst part right there. The strip club, attire, ethics, the presentation, the expectations. How do y'all roll? Cause I like I'm gonna keep it real with you. And you know I'm I'm a street person. So the first few times I went to the strip club was some dirty shit. Bitches got gunshots, <laughs> stab wounds. This came out of jail. Dimples in their ass. They shaking their ass all over the place. So you know I used to feed pigeons. I throw pigeons bread. Like this. So in this in this spot, it was like a table like this, bitch. And you gotta throw the dollars to her like that. And I'm like, damn, son, this is like feeding the pigeons. She will come to a move, man. So I started feeling like very like animalistic within this environment. <laughs> and I was like, wow, this, this, this ain't really for me. Because I get bitches, son. Like I don't really have to go here to get some chocha. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, wow, this is a very interesting experience and engagement with individuals. And then you start like like more so incorporating the crime side of things within how people are trying to survive and it was kind of depressing to me and I was like damn son but now the strip club is different because it ain't some dirty little hole in the wall from the south to how everybody the, the strip now it's club called is the gentleman's up. club yeah like and it was always gentleman's club it was always represented like that but it was kind of dirty in a certain sense like, but now it's like more in the forefront where Kim Kardashian, this one, that. like, like everybody could just be in the strip club chilling, doing their thing. So I don't really do that, but, but, but what's the overs and the unders? How do you walk in? You got hard bottoms on? How do you, man? The you got a thousand dollars poking out your pocket in singles? I'm, like, I'm not really like how do y'all niggas I'm do not it? really a strip club gentleman, you know what I'm saying? Individual. The first time I ever went to Shout a strip out to club, you, nigga. The first time I ever went to a strip club was in San Diego when I was in the military. <laughs> And when Go I went to San in, Diego, boy. Yeah, shout out to San Diego. They got the seafood. They got the shout military. Out to San they got Diego the bitches. Padres. They got everything, man. When I went in there, um, I sat down, you know what I'm saying? And then this shorty sat down next to me. Now, yeah. she sat down next to me. Something, I don't know, I, I like became like a social worker. I was trying to like, you know what I'm saying? My nigga! I wasn't trying to. Like, I wasn't trying to fuck you. Yeah, I was trying to figure like, out yeah, why are you exactly doing this? Word. And she's like, yo, uh, do you want to dance? Yes or no? So I'm like, nah. This nah, like, nah. Like, no, no and, and then before they walk away, they're like, well, can you buy me a drink? Word. word. Nah, I'm exactly. good. Exactly. Like, I'm not buying a $20 drink. So, like, I'm trying to figure out this social experience. Yeah, so you, you really don't catch me in a strip club. Nah. Me neither, my nigga. And you I don't go, no. I think the strip club question is good, though, because it depends on what you're trying to go in there to, to do, right? So That's check it out, right? Club. If you go to a strip club and you say you got, you know, you, you, you know, glazed up with, you know what I'm saying? Then you go in there for a particular reason. But if you're going in there for a drink, you can go in there dressed down, no pressure. You ain't really trying to throw nothing nowhere, you know what I'm saying? So it depends how you go there. Is well, how you ain't going to be hanging out there long enough. There really you know, ain't no spot but, for you to chill. You have, some of them have bars. Right? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, you know yeah, you're right. So you're as right, long right. as you're holding a little brew, you're cool. You know, and like you said, you can go in there. And but but it, it's also separated from the stage. I know what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah. And then the raunchy shit goes on where you, what you can't see underneath or up top. Yeah, that's yeah, where that yeah, raunchy yeah, shit yeah, look. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But So we're not strip club. Nah, I, I don't fuck with that shit. You know we shout out to you bitches shaking your ass, though. <laughs> Hopefully you're going to college or something. Right. Um, now, if you can inspire the kids in the ghetto with the universal, well, with the universal message on a certain level that is impactful, like, 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 what would it be? Because if 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 I were to talk to the kids from my neighborhood right now, what I tell them, I say, yo, respect your parents, but if your parents is bugged out, try, try to read books, try, try to do other stuff to educate yourself. Because sometimes you, you know, I thought my parents was my superheroes when I was a kid. And then when I realized my father's a con artist, my mother be alcoholic, wilding out. You, know, you got to find something else to kind of like curb your enthusiasm, Channel. but also guide you. You got to start looking around at individuals that are actually progressing in life and attach yourself to them. Because if you want to be something, you have to be a part of the, the environment that you're looking to be. So if you want to be with hustlers, you're going to be with hustlers. If you want to be a, with ballers, you're going to be with ballers. So at the end of the day, focus your mind on what you want to be. And at that point in time, life will start 
opened in the path for you. So if you want to be a thug, be a thug. To align you yourself good, with certain play individuals yourself. that you are looking to become. Mm. So that's why they I say always don't tell make me when I was young. They say, yo, if, if, if you know nine broke niggas, you'll be the tenth. That's true. Exactly. I heard that. Exactly. Same growing up as well. Word. So Whoever you surround birds yourself birds are the same amongst, feather flock you are, together. Flock you will together. become. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, energy. watch right. your surroundings. Yeah, and energy. if you have to stay to yourself, basically, Do that. to get to where you gotta right. go. See, but the thing is, with today's society, a lot of people are scared to be alone. They are scared to be ah, alone. They right. have to be with somebody or something to feel like somebody. They they're connected. Right. Ooh, they can't just stand on their own. Acceptance. Yeah. yeah exactly. Acceptance. But it's I think I think the biggest younger the younger you are, right? Fame. Except this is the biggest. I, I think the younger you are, the the one of, in my opinion, one of the the, the, the concepts that you gotta um, take or accept in your life is you gotta treat your mind, your body, and your spirit like a temple and watch this what you true. allow to enter. Because once certain take. things enter you, whether it be your spirit or your mind or your body, then they come. Or the shit to, town. Yeah, they it'll, call it, it'll alter you. And, and then it'll probably be something that you might never... Now there's juju out there. You know what I'm saying? Something that I you learned, might not I, I learned from, a lot you know? of things from the Latin people when it comes to spirituality. Correct. There's a, there's because, um, like I said, you have Santeria, you have this, you have that, right. you have Catholicism, you have a lot of things that got tied together. Right. So there's a lot of energy out there that I think people disregard. But the thing is that when you're a child... Because social media doesn't keep it real with you. Nah, when you're a child, so there's certain things that you're not taught, right? But you view it. But I think and now... You feel it. Now with all this bullshit that's going on, I think the younger you are, somebody has to come into your life and... Very early. And explain to you these factors will be factors if you don't factor in what you have to factor at a young age. Mm -hmm. So mind, body, and spirit has to be guarded. And then that'll kind of like alleviate some of the problems. Once you embody that, that, that right. mind, body, spirit, I got to keep myself clean, you're not going to fall to the wayside. Right. Basically. And, and you would tell a nigga, yo, pump your right. brakes before I and begin. And then you have integrity, right? Because exactly. when you don't have integrity, you will cut your, you'll cut your own throat if you lack integrity. Niggas, you know niggas cut their own tongue. So, I <laughs> don't see how big he said, right? It's true. I know niggas in the... Um, what, what the shit? But lay in the bushes to light you up. Your mom, mm -hmm. your mom's to set that ass yeah, up yeah. properly, yeah. gassed yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. Niggas laying in the bushes to light your yeah. ass up. Yeah, ten crack commandments. And and that's you a know. true statement. So now um we wrapping things up, my brothers. Um, what does eighty five music represent? What is the ultimate goal? And do you see you, do do you see you guys creating a situation like Griselda? Uh, well, we don't see Oh, do you like, have a situation like Griselda? Well, we don't see and I mean Griselda in a sense of not not how they do things <coughs> in rhyme. I mean, it was West Side Gun's idea. He went to the feds. He came out. There was some trials, some tribulations. He, Benny was actually signed to uh, 38 Special. Conway was like a freeway agent. And, and they were like all connected. And they kind of just all came together to do their thing. And I kind of see with uh, Kenneth Lamar... And different individuals and shout all the C E E O O O. All the Yeah, shout out to you, son. Um, all the individuals involved. I can see there is a conglomerate that kinda is comparable, but it isn't the same situation. Yeah. Indeed. But do we want the same goals in the uh, end? Of course we want the same goals. And in reference to our eighty five music, I wanna shout out the CEO, the C E O O, you know what I'm saying? The president Keith Lamar, pardon me, not Kenny. The uh the president. I just thought of that. I like to shout out the media. Personnel, our DJ. So uh, we're striving to create a label that will be amongst the prestige labels in time. So mm -hmm. we're not striving to do anything that's going to shortchange us. We're going to put in the work. We're going to keep putting in the work. And by next year, it'll be a lot different than what it is this year. I can kind of see that if there was no commercialism. There was no nothing going on. But there was other artists being incorporated. There was different Shout sounds. Yeah. And there, there was a point where it's like, we got to produce one thing a vibe, but we also got to make a vibe that's palatable for these other artists. Mm -hmm. So they could come in. But now you working with some yeah. family. Word. It's a whole different thing. Because yeah. I don't know Still if they, the I don't know if Silk though. and all them, they black. I don't know if they Peruvian. I don't know if they speak Spanish. No, I'm the only Peruvian one off the team. 
So I noticed when the, the Latino aspect wasn't being represented, I didn't think it was something that was being shunned. I didn't think it was something that you don't want to do, but I thought it was something that you need to fucking do every time. And I expressed this to you many times. Yes. So with you getting with this, your cousin, mm -hmm. the whole pro now I feel like I know you. Respect. Now I feel like, oh shit, this, not that I know you, but I'm speaking as a consumer. Mm -hmm. Now I'm like, oh shit. Now you, know? you would be considered what you're saying, like a fan. Yeah. Yeah. Because so, I'm like, right. now nah, I got, now nah, this nigga doing what right. he's supposed to do. Right. But he's doing it for this culture, this culture, that culture, and us. Mm -hmm. But this is all hip hop. Right. Like right. Pun did. Right. So that's what I always try to implore him. Yeah. Be like Big Pun, nigga. No. But Don't but pun, be like Nori. Because Nori went off and was fucking with they going. Nori did a whole fucking, uh, uh, what was that shit Ray called? Zone. Reggaeton yeah. run. And I didn't listen to none of that shit. I fuck with Nori. Nigga, I don't even drink like that. I sell crack. What, what, nigga? That's the Nori I know. But Nori's a but, hustler. You know? So that's, that's what I was so trying to implore. When things were getting dry on the other side, I said, you know what? I'm Spanish. I'm over I here. can do this. And nigga. He did it. But why I have to do that? that Just do it from the, the beginning the Latin and shit. get it. Is it has to be done in a particular Word. way. Like you, yeah, gotta, you're right. you cannot oversaturate a project. You know what I'm saying? So no, I think it's, it's like the su it's like a, a seasoning. Yeah, it ain't got too much adobo, too much that song, nigga. Right, he can tell you. I always, I say, yo, my brother, kick that Latin shit, son. Yeah, he he would he would occasionally um tell me that like you know the Latin this and that, and I would give him pointers and shit Flavors. based on my opinion. You know what I'm saying? So. He knows exactly what he Celia Cruz, my favorite. Azuka! Ba, 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 da, 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 ba, ba, ba. Woo! A lot of fly shit. Hector Lavoy, this one, that one. It's a lot of badass niggas out there that did they shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so man, that, I would just like it's to like see. like Hector Lavoy and Willie Cologne right here. Yeah, you know what I'm that, saying? That salsa movement was incredible. Nigga. And was salsa incredible. still moves me to this day. I be, I be cleaning my house. <laughs> Cecilia Cruz. Bam, bam, bam. I don't even know what the fuck she took. But she I, fire, I yeah. know some of it and not all the lyrics, but it's the vibe. Yeah. It's the movement. It's the Latin energy. Yeah. The Cuban motion. Y'all yeah. niggas got something. Yeah. Give that shit to the world in hip hop. Yeah. That's what I, I really. Agree. That's I agree. what I took away from this project, and I really, really appreciate it. That's because my nice. brother really came through, and now I understand that you're the mastermind behind he is. that. And Son is over there, 85 Music, with a lot of black Salute niggas. to 85 Music. And bro. shout out to 85 Music, but maybe, you know, th there needs to be a little bit more of a Latin influence in what everybody's doing. It doesn't have to be crazy all around the board. I got a song like that, too. Yeah. yeah but there you go, Diddy, with uh, Mommy Vansky. Right, right, right. That, you know what I'm saying? He was, he was one of the first ones that kind of like, wasn't scared to push that envelope. Who's because that? he was fucking J-Lo. Uh, Diddy. Okay. Because before that, you really didn't hear it like that. I mean, you, I mean on, 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 on a wide on spectrum. A wide, yes, yeah. I agree. You know I agree. Yeah. I agree. Because you had that Latin shit going back to the... What, to the general. Yeah. yeah. Like that, but, but, but as far as what we're talking about, getting the Latin infusion in, back in the music, mm -hmm. right. I don't really hear that right now. Right. I don't you hear know, from you know, the, you know that music goes. But I hear it from the reggaeton, but it's just one way. You, music goes in waves, though. Like, there'll be a, a 10 year span where you don't hear something, and then the next 10 years after like those, fashion. Yeah, it comes back. Nigga, like, now, now you see people dressing like 95. Right, correct, 94, correct, yeah. correct, correct. Yeah, like you know what I'm saying? There's right. certain things that will always remain fashionable, mm -hmm. and then there's other things that'll be like, it'll run that turn, it'll mm -hmm. go this way, then it'll trend, come back yeah, around. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, but you guys. Like, you got glue. So you need to... Yo, Keith Lamar. You need to hire this motherfucker. Bring him in the show. Do his thing. You know what I'm saying? And I don't mean the show like we doing a show. I mean bring him in the show. And just have him sit in the background. You just observe. You be a consultant. Con con conciliary. That's weird. That's weird. All right. You know what I mean? And you are that Latin factor. And you bring it in. You know what I'm saying? But that's another thing. But anyhow... I, I always want to represent all my peoples because as a kid, 
everybody embrace me. I sold drugs with everybody. I'm a Chinese nigga. I don't give a fuck. That's the way it should be, though. That's yeah. The way it should be. So I think everybody. You can't exclude. Yeah, everybody needs to see the detail. Yeah, exactly. They can't exclude. exclude. Yeah. So, what do we, how, how do we want to end this? Well, you know, we, we're not trying to rush out of here, but like, 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 what's the everlasting message right now? The everlasting message is if you seek something, you can do it. Just put your mind to it. Don't worry about what's not happening at the point in time when you're working. Just focus on the progress. Once you focus on the progress, that'll give you more motivation to keep going forward. That's it. Basically. Yeah. And um, yourself? What, is this what, a message for the world type situation? Nigga, they give you a message for the crackheads. I don't give a fuck. I would say God I love crackheads, man. Perseverance coming off of the year that Dope we had. Dopeies, I don't like them too much, but crackheads, I What, two them. years yeah. under all of this pressure and all this? Oh, the thing, pandemic. A lot of yes. people checked out, rest in peace. Wow. But I would say perseverance and, and health. Priority yeah. number one. I think health is, is yeah, number it's, one. It's, it's number one. You yeah. know? Can't do anything without your health. Correct. So that's, you know, there's one message to to be you know delivered to deliver to the world would be that persevere and keep keep yourself in a healthy you know what i'm saying condition as as healthy as you could be you know what i'm saying and what does it mean being the big ceviche <laughs> so, so, you know what we want people to know or feel about the peruvian culture is just our tenacity and our diligence you know what i'm saying yeah. basically uh, yeah that being said manteca pipe Materia Prima available on all streaming platforms. You already Yo, know salute to the is. family. Salute to the Vargas family. Machado, Machado family. family. The De La oh, family. Oh, that was the one question I forgot. The Jimenez family. Tavares. Yo, Ed, get well soon. Yeah, I had that lyric on the album. Vargas and Machado. What's up, Vargas and Machado? Pregúntale a tu tía. Your Machado, your Vargas. That's I know this now. correct, right. yeah. What did they, right before we go? Why was that necessary? Well, I'll say before because my man was like, "What the fuck is a Vargas and my child? What the fuck is that?" Before I had the opportunity to like, let's put it like this: if if it wasn't for all the Vargases that are in my bloodline coming before me, I wouldn't be here. So it's just my little tribute. Pop you know dukes. what I'm saying? Mom to dukes. to yeah. the ancestors, to those that were before me. Just a little salute. That's all. Or, I mean, I, the brother just it told me this how we going to do it. So I bet. Just write your verse. I bet. That's it. <laughs> Don't fuck with this, son. It might hurt you. But anyhow, we out this motherfucker. Peace. Peace. Manteca, bye.